Boys and girls have two P's, peeing and pooping. We know that the proper role of government is to cover the two P's. Well, surprise, we just figured out 2023, the girls have three P's. They have peeing and pooping and period. The girls don't have a muscle down there. When that happens, it happens. It's an emergency every time that happens. It's a basic biological function. Is the proper role of government to cover a basic biological function? I submit to you that it is. Dear God, um, man, you can learn a lot apparently, even when you're, I'm gonna say 55, that these basic biological things happen. In any event, while the argument that you just saw there was tortured at best, that was Rod Furness, a Republican, who was actually arguing for something good, which is free access to tampons in Idaho's schools. It's hard to tell from what he was saying there, but he got there eventually. Unfortunately, more Republicans turned against his argument. And in particular, a group of 10 Republican women helped to vote this down. So tampons will not be free to kids in schools in Idaho. There would have been both for public schools and public charter schools who serve students in grades six through 12, free access to feminine hygiene products free of charge. They would have included tampons, sanitary napkins, and others. And by the way, to cover the entire state, that would have cost less than $1 million, just $735,400. But it's not gonna happen. And we're gonna get into some of the arguments that were made by individual representatives to argue why free access to tampons is in some way woke. But what do y'all think about what you saw? What do they want them to do? <laughs> Three Ps, everyone. No, but like, Three of them. I really mean, Republicans. So, to, okay, look, 23, you say, oh, everybody thinks from their own perspective. I get that, right? That's normal. Uh, and you think, well, what do you mean? Why don't their parents just buy them tampons, right? That's because 77% of you can afford that and think it's perfectly normal. But 23% can't afford it. Those are numbers that have been studied, right? Mm. So if a quarter of the kids that are going th through that can't afford it, what do you want them to do? Just bleed in the middle of school? Because it would be woke to help them? It would, I mean, do they think this is optional? Like, oh, you know what? Oh, you're just being woke by having a period. <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay, so uh, my like, periods, they are so woke. I mean, I just gotta <laughs> say, every, every time I get my period, I talk about taking down the patriarchy. It's just <laughs> what I have to do. So the only argument I could see is because they are discomforted by new phrases. And we've talked about that before, and it's that's not a crazy thing, okay? But then it depends context, right? So they say menstrual equality and period poverty are new phrases. And we're unfamiliar with them, so they scare us and we call them woke. Well, okay, well, let's break it down. So Latinx was a new phrase. I always thought it was absurd. A lot of people on the left yelled at me, and it turns out I was right. They pulled Latinos, and apparently about 4% of Latinos are in favor of it, 96% are opposed. An absurd phrase we didn't need that was invented for a category that does that already had plenty of phrases, okay? But there is no phrase for, hey, Turns out 23% of girls can't afford tampons and we need to get them some sort of equity or they're going through poverty and it was, this relates to their period. There is no such phrase. So they came up with phrases like uh, period poverty, menstrual equity, but something to help make things so that those poor girls don't have to rush to school or rush home and miss school. So what's wrong with that? I, I'm, I don't like new things, I'm a conservative. Let's make sure that we don't help them. Okay, if that's how you roll. I think that it's a little even more insidious than that. I mean, we we I'm sure you guys covered it, but the um, I believe it was Minnesota, yeah, uh, the passing of the free school lunches and some of the Republican arguments against that. They genuinely want school, public school in particular, to be as hostile of a place as possible and not a place that is communal for kids where they feel comfortable, where if they're too poor, they're able to have a sanitary napkin, have a tampon, not have to bleed through their pants, which like going going through puberty as like a cis woman myself, girl at that time, that's something that happens and it's really embarrassing and you get made fun of. Like they're trying to, the, the people that are trying to push this forward are trying to make school a place that is more hospitable for kids, where they want to go to the best of their ability. I mean, not kids don't love school, but still one where they can have food, access to, to those kinds of uh, sanitary services, 
all that good stuff. But Republicans are ideologically opposed to public school. They want charter schools, they want to privatize things. They want it to be religious schools. They want to undercut every public institution possible. So they want to make it hostile for kids that are menstruating in their public schools. That's it. Plus, they also have generally embedded misogyny about and and fear of female parts or uh, parts that are associated with menstruating. And so they're just consistently like terrified. Oh, It might be a vagina, Oh, it might be a period. <laughs> like they're all these Republicans are just overgrown little boys too afraid to actually deal with people's reproductive processes. And so that that's yeah. what you get from that. Um, so uh, like, uh, I, I do think it, it stems to, uh, from uh, just trying to undercut public schools uh, as an institution more broadly. Yeah, well, it's actually, it's honestly, it's a great invocation of the word woke. Woke is just, I don't like that thing, so I'm going to generalize it to being woke. They don't want tax money to be spent to help regular people. I mean, that, that's been true for a very long time. Um, I think as Emma points out, it's even more appropriate that they don't want it to happen in schools. But notice like, they don't think it's worth time, attention, or money to make kids comfortable when it comes to you know having access to these products or whatever. But like if it's referencing the race of Rosa Parks, they will do literally anything. They will scour a library to make sure that their kids are comfortable when it comes to that. And when you look at some of the arguments that they make, and then you think about what Republicans have been up to nationally recently, take a look at the hypocrisy. This is Representative Heather Scott. This bill is a very liberal policy, and it's really turning Idaho into a bigger nanny state than ever. It's embarrassing <laughs> not only because of the topic. So she is advancing the right wing, like I guess misogynistic idea that just talking about periods is inherently embarrassing, I guess. Um, but because of the actual policy itself. So you don't have to be a woman to understand the absurdity, and you don't have to feel that you're insensitive to not address this. No, if you don't address this, it actually is both ignorant and insensitive. You should feel those experiences. You seem to be implying uh, that you are. So uh, providing those products would be being a nanny state, but combing through uh, every book in the library to find if there's any references to masturbation or something is not a nanny state. And what is the argument here? So if you can, if providing those products, is a nanny state, why do you have toilet paper there? Exactly. I mean, what people I was gonna say, could John. bring in their own toilet paper. Why are you providing that? That's just being well, the nanny state. Get out of their crack and let them pull themselves up by their underoos. But tampons are for, for, uh, for many times uh, female uh, sex organs. So that's really icky, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't like to deal with that. So let's just not even address it. And also, like, they love punishing women for being women. That's what the entire abortion reproductive health care debate is. They want women's reproduction to be either out of sight, out of mind, or under control from male patriarchs. Yeah, look, this program costs under a million dollars. Okay, it's even for Idaho standards, it's minuscule, and they grant that it's minuscule. Even the Republicans say it's a tiny amount of money. The toilet paper costs way more. Right, because it goes to all the schools. There's a lot more of it, etc. Right, so you tell me the difference between, hey, uh, the toilet paper and the tampon for the people who can't afford it. By the way, they're both free. I mean, you. I mean, I hate to give them ideas, <laughs> but you could say like, oh, what are you giving away free toilet paper for? You're so woke. Okay, the rich kids should bring in their own toilet paper. The poor kids should walk around with pants like that. Okay, mm. oh, oh, don't be woke. Don't be woke. Okay, <laughs> and remember. Yeah, so in this case with the tampons, it's a war against women, right? But Idaho is almost all white, so this one is not racial. It's just we don't like poor people. That too, yeah. Right? Exactly. I mean, like, yeah, the rich kids and the middle class kids are gonna have the tampons, they're gonna be fine. This is just for poor white people in Idaho. We don't think that we think you should be humiliated in class, and mm -hmm. we think you shouldn't go to school. And then if poor people aren't humiliated, well, that's woke. Yeah, and and same thing with the school lunch debate, right? If you don't have the ability to pay for your own lunch, uh, we won't provide free lunch for you, and you'll be hungry, and you might not actually not come to school. You'll be a little bit more uh, uneducated, and you'll then be a little bit more able to be manipulated by bosses into taking low wages and stuck in a cycle of poverty because we have bled, no pun intended, these social institutions dry, 
and made them so inhospitable to poor people, to women, to anybody that we don't feel like we have an incentive to educate and be a part of the ruling class, which is what some the top of education funnels people into. You get cast aside because these institutions are only for the people that we want to be in these institutions. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.